we're here to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah. And um, so Framestore and Trickster worked on it. And uh, yeah, we just here to have a conversation about what we did. So Framestore, what we did was the whole beginning of the film. So we started um, the Sovereign Planet Power Station, uh, where that big slimy pink monster comes down and then causes all kinds of havoc. And then the escape sequence, so the space, uh, the space battle where they leave the planet and then get attacked by the Sovereign or chased by the Sovereign and then everything blows up and then they go through the teleportation hall and this is where we hand it over to you guys, right? Yeah. Yes, that was one of the sequences we worked on, the effects department especially, and yeah, we, like, we worked on, a diff on diff different, different sequences, yeah. like 330 shots all, all together. And then, um, yeah, and then it was just a back and forth of us. No, you giving stuff to us and yeah. we giving stuff back. Yeah. So to make it seamlessly match to each other. Yeah. And so we shared, we shared the Milano fighter, right? The, the ship? Exactly, the, the Milano the fighter, which was the quadron, which came from Veta, basically. Yeah, yeah. So it was also, like, all the studios, yeah, basically the, the, yeah. the Milano fighter as well, exactly. Yeah. Which crashed into the in the into the Did forest. Did you guys do rocket as well and like yes, the characters? Yes, okay, yes, yeah. yes. But you as well, no? Yeah, yeah. Well, we were we were designing the assets exactly. and then handing them out. Yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. And you created the, the the assets for that, and we put also the fur on top, which you also yeah. created the setup for, and then yeah, it was just a back and forth all the time, basically, okay. to make it all seamlessly go into each other. How was it working with multiple studios? Uh, I, I felt it was actually helping uh, because it meant that at some point in time you had to be done before the film was finished and then you had to yeah. give it to someone else yeah so there was sort of like a fake deadline that forced everyone to agree on it and then once that was handed over it couldn't be changed yes I found that actually quite helpful uh, helpful but also challenging and what I also enjoyed a lot in, in that aspect was that you always got new stuff from other people which you didn't see before and it was always like extremely um, I don't know I, I just felt enthusiastic about it because seeing what Veta does sending yeah. it over to us seeing what you guys did sending well, it to us well I guess us, you get a better sense of what the whole film is exactly when you see and more then it's like all the puzzle yeah. pieces you work on one piece and you're so focused on that one piece and you don't know the whole puzzle I mean you know it in sequences and you know it in shots but you don't know what, what the puzzle yeah. is going to look like in the end and then it's like ah this is the piece of the puzzle there and then there and then it also motivates you a lot I think because yeah. of course you have times where it doesn't I don't know it's like it's a struggle and, and whatever and you have to do this and that and a lot of work to do and deadlines and everything and then to see what others do is like really like ah oh, that's a nice yeah every morning when you see the new sequences the new shots from other guys it's like oh wow this is what it's gonna look like in the end great so it gives you a lot of I don't know enthusiasm Some yeah but yeah, yeah I, kind exactly. of, I kind of felt the same um, and uh, while it feels like you, you work on a you work on a bigger team than exactly. just the people you work and with. It makes the team even bigger than it, yeah. it actually yeah. is. Because of course you every day see the guys around you that you know and everything and it's always the same. And then yeah. some new fresh influence from out which yeah. makes it really like interesting. It was so all in all quite enjoyable. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, yeah, what was, what was the highlight challenge? What was uh, the highlight VFX challenge you faced on your end? I don't know if it means the, the most fun to work on or maybe the most challenging to work on. To be honest, I, I can't even tell that in, in one specific task or shot or sequence or so. I don't know. What was it for you? Well, the, I think there was a lot of bread and butter, like lots of guns fired, lots yeah. of like the spaceships. And, yeah, and it, that's, that's difficult but you kind of, you, you have an expectation how it's going to look like. Yeah. And then you have all those things that you have no idea what it's going to look like. Exactly. Like the thing, yeah. make this magical. You know, like, oh yeah, the, that, we did the meta waves. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, exactly. Thing. That's like, a good oh, answer. Yeah, so it's really, it's really pretty and really dangerous. And yeah. like, make it like fuck, magical. Right? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, and I think that was, that was quite an interesting process going through the motions, coming up with that. Mm -hmm. It was stressful. It wasn't mm -hmm. always easy. Mm -hmm. uh, the same that the asteroids were quite a big deal on our end. It's quite yes. the asteroids. Yes, yes. Because conceptually, 
it's quite a challenge. If you're not making yeah. an asteroid field, it shouldn't look like an asteroid field, so it's a quantum asteroid field. And it, you know, they, they pop in and out of the other dimension. And how do you show that? And yes. How do you show the other dimension? Or do you show it? And yes, do you yes, not yes. show it? And, um, and the struggles with that, while always thinking, oh, but you know, okay, it's fine. We, one asteroid is awesome, but we have a thousand on screen. Like, how do you? <laughs> And, and, then, then, yeah. and then you do like one concept, like, okay, this is kind of how it works. And can we see it in all of them, like or in five shots? And, and, and always having to keep in mind, if you do a thing, but you know exactly that it will multiply a thousand times yes. when, when it's how you want to go about it. Yes. And I found that it was hard, um, but it was also quite, quite fruitful because you could feel there was a creative decision that had to be made. Yes. And it, it hit its limitations. It's like some stuff looked awesome and maybe, yeah, great idea, but it takes five minutes to explain, like that obelisk doing his stuff. There was a really elaborate idea about how that works and what he spews and when it explodes. And, but you can't tell, as an audience, you like, what's going on, right? So uh, there was a lot of, of, of exploring and going very wide and then focusing in on something uh, that is more tangible. But you could only get there by having gone the whole, blowing it up to something big to then condense it down to yes. something that works. But, uh, I find that it was the hardest, but also sort of, most the, interesting. The, the most interesting part, yes. obviously, once you're yes. in, when you're in it, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but <laughs> yeah. in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, it was a necessary struggle. Maybe it could have been, we could have been handling it better. But yeah. uh, you always, uh, in hindsight, you always have. Yes. Oh, yeah, we could have, but you, you never know because you actually have no idea where you're going. So you just keep on going. But yeah. this process that you talk about is for me the most important thing yeah. while while working on such a long term project or yeah. show or movie or whatever you call it because you you learn not only a lot about the software and the tools you use but also about yourself like how do you deal with that stuff how do you deal with that kind of professionalism that professionalism that you have to keep up to date every day from morning to evening and then when you start to struggle with something that, that which you always do because you're working on a computer you have to render you have to simulate you have to do everything. so this is the kind of like this process of growing and and becoming one with the task even if it's such a very credit <laughs> yeah even if such a crazy task like make it magical yeah. and make sense of it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. It, it has to be physically plausible, but it's in space, and we don't know how a one kilometer diameter explosion in space looks like because you don't have a reference. Yeah. You know, and and so you you just you you create your ways to to solve that one big problem into smaller pieces, break it up like a code into small fragments of problems, and then try to solve one problem after each other, and then building that kind of puzzle in that puzzle of that puzzle of a bigger puzzle. And all these kind of fragmentation, that's, this one I like most, yeah. to be honest. Well, I think we were quite lucky because we had a, there was quite a creative vision behind it. Mm -hmm. you have, mm -hmm. James Gunn was very mm -hmm. clear in what yeah. you want. Yes. Not necessarily the specifics, but the, 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 sense, the feel of yes. it. The, yes. the whole, well, um, it's, it's, you look at any of the frames from the film, you can take like your, the, a mobile thing, Anything, right? any uh, or you, you take what we did on the power station, you take a single frame, and it's a rainbow. It's yeah. like a big. Yeah. It's, it's this Overload, is Guardian, like this is Guardians of the Galaxy. It has yes. quite a strong visual language, mm -hmm. and I think that supported it a lot. Being having having this overall, you knew. Okay, it's always pushing a little bit into crazy because mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yeah. And and uh, for me, it was letting go of you know the, the real world constraints of like gravity is 9.81 mm -hmm. or whatever the planet mm -hmm. has they are on, and like sort of um, embracing that it. Is storytelling and not a simulation of the real world. Mm -hmm. You want to make a joke. You want to mm -hmm. make a point. You want to tell something compelling. And reality actually is quite in the way. Mm -hmm. Especially if you go into space, you know, like, yes. you know it would never work like that. Yeah. Everything's on fire, right? When you're having ships, and everything's on fire. You're like, well, <laughs> it wouldn't. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and we're okay with that. But sometimes you feel like you're struggling to accept that something doesn't fall it's at gravity real. speed. You're it's like, not real. Well, actually, no, no, no. You need, and, and that's. You're right. It's a process, and it sort of at some point you, you learn to embrace that and, and take that as a vision. You, you can, you're just like, okay, I'm fine. Within the boundaries of let's go something nuts, uh, it actually helped a lot putting it into the right spot. Yeah, yeah and, and like you start to take over the vision more or less. Not the vision; it's too much. But you start to take over the thinking of yeah. where to go. Yeah, the interpretation of it. Exactly, yeah. because yeah. in the beginning, you're like you said, you're like, oh no, that, oh no, too. Uh, and then you start to open yourself and get loose of that constraints. Yeah. 
and, and then start to breathe and, and open and trying everything out and even overshoot everything and even and then you think that you overshoot it but still James is like make it five, five times more and you're like it's Not already 50 enough, yeah. times more yeah. it's like 250 times more yeah 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 just go for it and, and this is really a lot of fun I think because you learn the borders of your own mind so to speak well, so preconception you have a so yeah. if someone says yeah it's the space thing and bam you have this very clear idea and mm -hmm. actually that doesn't exist it's in your head it's not what you've been doing yes yes and everything has a different yeah. in interpretation of stuff than the other guy so you you try to follow all these kind of yeah. visions and interpretations that's around there well i mean i have i have a favorite shot i'd uh -huh. say uh, because we worked on that for quite a long time and it was the first time uh, it all came together in that beginning sequence where, where Groot is the dance, dancing, and then he like, writes, for ten the, minutes, like he writes that rat thing, and uh, and he falls off, and then he comes back, and then they come back, and he writes on this thing mm -hmm. under the obelisk, and mayhem, mm -hmm. yes, and there's yeah, fire, yeah, 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 yeah. and there's those meta waves going on, and, and that was when we looked at that for the first time with the music on, and that was like, well, fuck, this is going to be some sort of epic when just seeing that, and I think that it's was open, quite open, a, open, yeah. that was quite a. A good moment. It's a great. It's a great shot. I think the music goes like quite dramatic at the same time. Yeah. I think this is. If I have to pick one, I'd say that's quite, uh, quite a symbol for what yeah. we worked on. And I'm like, yeah, this is, this is what we did it for. Really. But how yeah. long was that show? Was it like ten minutes or something? <laughs> yeah. I, I was sitting there watching the movie. I was like, Jesus, well, seven, still? about seven thousand frames. I don't. I don't how know. many? Seven thousand frames or something. So. Um, <laughs> Well, the way we, we had to break of it course, up into bits, of course, of uh, but course, that but was still. part of the problem having exactly. to then you make have sure that the handover works. Yeah. Which then goes into the next shot, which is another shot. Sub -shot. That is quite a. Uh, it was, that was part of the challenge, but uh, almost like more a, like from an organizational point of view. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if you change this, you change that. Yeah. Right? So there's if you need to be aware of that everything is interconnected somehow. Yeah. Um, we have. We get away with a little bit of trickery because everything is fairly out of focus. It's a lens on Groot, and everyone just looks at Groot. Uh -huh, yeah. But someone will be like, "Well, we spent so much time on it," and then they just defocus, and it's sort of just the backdrop. <laughs> uh, but it, it works as a whole. But yeah, yeah, that was that was part of a, a of a rather big challenge, making sure that that sort of works consistently. Although the camera spins a lot, and there's a lot of elements in the air, and uh, I'm quite glad how it worked out. In the end. Yes, yeah. it was a pleasure. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Johannes. Uh, looking forward for the next project. Yeah. Yes, as <laughs> Thank well. You.